So we're going to begin drawing our still life of these flowers with oil pastels. Uh, when you look at a piece of paper, it can be a little bit intimidating. Like, can you, in your mind, imagine looking, just looking at the blank piece of paper, the one in front of you, imagine how it's going to look like when you're all the way done. Can you do that? You know exactly, very clearly, how it's going to look like, how you're going to draw it, what colors you're going to use, where things are going to be on the page. Yeah. But I, I could imagine it, but I'm not really sure it will look at it. Well, okay. Yeah. So, you can imagine it, but maybe you're not confident that you'll be able to execute your vision, your creative vision. So my job is to help you realize that vision and we're going to give you some simple steps that you can do to set yourself up for success. So let's let the stragglers come through. You're late, minus 10 points each. So it can be a little bit intimidating looking at a blank piece of paper and seeing what you want and saying, oh, how am I going to do it? How am I going to get what I want from this blank piece of paper? So one thing that you can do, set yourself up for success, is draw a border around your paper with your rulers. Go ahead and do that now. And the way, everybody, eyes on me. Look, look how I did it. Very easy, you take one side of the ruler and line it up with the paper and then use the other side of the ruler to make your line. And we're doing that around all four sides. They will all equally be the width of the ruler. Make sure to carefully line your rulers up so your lines are parallel and straight with the edge of your paper. We know parallel, right? Parallel and perpendicular. Okay. So go ahead and take out your pencils and make a border around your paper. We don't need to discuss it amongst the, ourselves. Quietly, quietly. Just focus on the line. Is that straight? What? It's too thin. Take this side of the ruler. Line it up. Let's make another line. Ask your neighbor. Don't guys, don't touch the flowers. If they move, it's going to mess up the other class's drawings. So Mr. B, the flowers don't look right. Like those grade five unicorns move the flowers around. <laughs> so you don't need to you don't need to erase that. It's okay. Just continue on the Okay. So if you look my lines go over and cross each other in the corners. That's fine. You don't need to do it perfectly and have the lines stop where they touch each other. Go ahead. Come on in. Minus another 10 points. <laughs> Late. When you are done with all four sides of your paper having the border, sit well, look at me. That's going to let me know that you're ready to continue. How are you doing, Jim? Um, wait. Yeah. Wait, use the ruler. Yeah. So you don't need to line it up this way. You can do it just that way, and that's how you know. 
it'll be straight. Right. So you can continue all the way down to the edge of the paper. It doesn't need to be so perfect. It's just a straight line. Four straight lines. So when you hold the ruler in the future, first of all, you're using a pen. Do you have a pencil? No. Right, maybe your neighbor has one? Some student left their pencils here. There's no pencils in there. Okay. Appreciate everybody sitting well, waiting patiently, quietly. So we have a couple, just a couple students left. So those of you that are finished, uh, on the top of the paper, inside the border, close to the top of the paper, in pencil, write your name. See where I put my name or the word name? Go ahead and put it there. And then if you're sitting at this table with the pink vase, write the word pink vase, V-A-S-E. This table, white vase. This table, green vase. Well, thank you. When we collect up the papers, we're going to all keep our papers together in our groups. Okay. So Enzo, did you write your name? It's too big to sharpen. I mean, we're done with the pencils after this, so just write your name and white base. All right. So can anybody think of a reason why I had you put a border on the paper? Yeah. Definitely inside the border. We definitely want to do that. What is the border? How does it work? Why would we put a border? So it will look beautiful. Well, we always hope it will look beautiful and pretty. It'll have some space on the sides. Smaller. It does become smaller. One more. Yep. Yeah, it acts like a fence. You know, when we're drawing and there's no border, we can get so focused on the little details of our drawing and we realize we don't realize until we run out of space that there's no more paper. Also, when we're looking out at real life, at, our, at the still life, having that border there is going to help us imagine the border around it in real life and figure out where things are and where things should go on the paper. So it's a helpful tool to help visualize what we're looking at and put it on the paper. So I notice sometimes in the school, Maybe it's just our age group. We, we sometimes think about things, or we sometimes do things without thinking about them and just rush into it. And then it's like, oh, Mr. B, I need a new paper. I messed up. So while we're doing these things, we need to think carefully about what we're drawing. And my job is to show you how to think about what you're doing, how to look at the still life, analyze it, draw, think about what you're drawing, or what you already had, had drew, and then make your next move. So it's like helping us develop a plan for success. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, say this is my paper. I'm 
Mr. B isn't. Uh, it's not a super straight line. So I have my border. I have my name. I've got all this space. And we've talked about this before. When we make art, we want this artwork to be like a window into our imagination. We're the king of this world that's inside the paper. And our job is to make the person that's looking at our art feel like they're inside of it. So I, it's kind of like a, a problem solving thing. And the first problem we run into, well, if I draw my vase, how's that? Why is it too big? Henry. I think the line you draw is not the same. How do you mean? What words do we know? How can we use some art terms? The lines are not symmetrical. The lines are not symmetrical. Okay, so that's a problem. Symmetry. Okay. What else is the problem with it? The flower is at least a half of the picture, and yours is over the two sides. Are you sure it's half of the picture? At least. At so, least size. All right. Well, let's change it. It's too big. What? what are some problems with this? It's not symmetrical. Okay. So, I, I need to show you some steps to help you draw a symmetrical base. Got it. It's out of vision, which means that the person who looks ahead must use a magnifying glass to really understand what piece of art. So it's too small. Yeah. Okay. So it's the size is this problem again. So I need to teach you something to figure out how big you want to draw your vase. It's not in the middle. It's not in the middle. Okay. So I'll, that's another thing, the placement. We want to think about the placement. Placement. Okay. Well, the first thing that I do when I start a still life is I look at what I'm going to be drawing. Art, it's 50% looking, 25% thinking, 25% actually drawing. So the drawing part is the least amount, pretty much. And the looking Maybe I shouldn't have used 50, 25, 25, because it's look, think, draw, think, look, think, draw, think. It's a process. So when I look at the still life, I'm trying to find something with a simple shape, something important that I can use to compare everything else around it. What would you say that would be? If you're looking at the, the flowers in the vase, which thing would be something that we could use to measure everything around it? Something simple and easy to draw. So a really long leaf. But what if I want to measure not just up and down, but side by side by side. It's very thin, and it's not the same thickness all throughout. And it's kind of a complicated shape, right? What has the most simplistic shape at what we're looking at? Look at the pink vase. What about the vase itself? It has a more simple shape than the flowers. The flowers are have organic shapes, right? We've talked about organic and geometric shapes before. 
So when I look at that, I say, okay, the vase is easy to draw. And I can kind of figure out its size. What if I look at this pink vase and I say, okay, how tall is that vase compared to the flowers? And can I measure the flowers not using feet or inches or centimeters, but say, oh, I think this is so many vases tall. So I'm imagining stacking the vases on top of each other to figure out how tall the flowers should be. So does anybody have a guess? We're looking at the very tip top of these plants. How many vases tall do you think it is? Somebody raise your hand and give me a guess. Yes. Four and a half. Four and a half. Henry, go touch the flowers. Gia? Three. Three. Well, I, mean, I like that you used a half because that's a good, that's a good way of thinking about it. Yes. Go ahead. Two and a half. Yes. Three and a little bit. Three and a little bit. Okay. When I look at it, I would say, in my opinion, someone has been doing this a long time, it's okay. I would say it is four vases tall, maybe a little bit under four. Pretty sure it's four. So I look at my paper, and I can divide my paper into four. And we're just doing this, uh, making a little dash mark, and we're not making lines going all the way across, but I want you to just, have to be perfect, don't, you don't need to use your rulers, if you're at the pink table, go ahead and make some dash lines on your paper. So you're going to make three dash lines, just on the side, on one side. People at the white vase table, how many vases tall do you think your entire still life is? Yes. Two. Two. Pretty easy. So people at the white vase table, will really just need to divide their paper in half. So you just make a little dash line where the halfway, where you think the halfway, not inside the paper, on the line of the border, on the left side. Green vase, green vase, your vase is shaped a little bit differently. So you need to not think about their vases when you're measuring, you need to think about your vase. Your vase is a little bit taller. Three and a half? Four. Three and a half. Okay. It's your choice. You're the artist. You're making the choices. So you will need to divide your paper into three. So just put two dash lines on the side of your paper on this, on this line, on the left side. One, two, three for the green base. Now I have a question for you. Now I'm going to draw this face. Other than the symmetry and the size, does anybody see a problem with it? Anybody have a, does it feel weird at all? Yes. I think the, the round part uh, the round part is not like completely a circle, and it should be like a bit flat. Okay, well, let's I guess ignore the shape of it. Where I put it, does it feel good there? Does it feel right and okay for you where I put it? I don't think it should touch the border. Yes, there's something that happens. I don't know really how to share my feelings about it with you exactly, but it just feels a little bit awkward, like we're squeezing 
everything, when we make our vase touch the, grass. the, the border, it, it's a kind of awkward tension. You know what tension is? Yes. Yeah. It just doesn't feel good to us. So what I want you to do before you draw anything, actually, I want you to open up your oil pastels and wait a second before you before you open them I've placed every oil pastel box with the ballerina like this take the box off in the corner you will see light peach a middle peach and maybe like a yellow or brown color the first three on the top left corner the first three oil pastels. So I want you to only use either the light peach, uh, this kind of yellowish brown color that's actually this one's a little bit too dark. There's a lighter one. The, I put the pastels that I want you to use. We're only using one color today. You have an emergency? Okay, go ahead. So, either yellow ochre or this light peach or kind of a middle peach color. We're not going to draw with pencil today. We're going to draw the oil pastel. And that creates another problem, doesn't it? Yeah. If we're only drawing oil pastel, what's the problem with oil pastel? Somebody raise it. Yes. What? What is? It? What's the problem with oil pastel? Drawing with oil pastel. She had a with the oil. So the first three, yellow, yellow peach, or a light peach, or yellow ochre. Right. So you guys, this one. So one person. Take the light peach, the other person take the yellow ochre. Right. It doesn't matter which one. So every, every group of two people is sharing a box. So one person take the yellow ochre, one person take the light peach. So we can't erase with the oil pastel. And that's a problem, but there's also an advantage to drawing with the oil pastel instead of the pencil. So you can put your pencils away, forget, totally forget about them. So when we, I want you to imagine your paper like this, and this is it. When we draw, we create a little groove in the paper, and even when we erase it, that groove is still there. And then when we cover, when we draw with the oil pastels, the oil pastels will not go inside that groove. So we'll get a white line that we can't do anything about. So when we're drawing with oil pastels, we have to draw without a pencil. So we, and we can't erase oil pastels. But in the end, it'll pay off because we won't have ugly white lines that we can't go over. So go ahead with your oil pastel and take about two or three fingers. Place those fingers on the border and make a little dash line in the middle. With, with oil pastel. And Henry, since you were in the bathroom. Yeah, you can use that one. Okay, so in the middle. Does that feel like the middle? Maybe it goes over a little bit more. Just a little sideways dash line. 
about here, right there. Okay. And when we're doing this, I don't want you to press hard. You can press it softly. Uh, that's not the right part. Uh, use, see that peach that's in the corner there? Yeah, use that one. That's fine. All right, that's going to be where the bottom of our vase. So we're trying to figure out how tall our vase is going to be. We know where the bottom is. We know how, how much paper we have. When we're, when we're drawing the vases, which group is going to draw a bigger vase on their paper? The white vase table? or the pink vase table. We're not talking about the green vase, but you guys can guess. Whose vase is going to be bigger on their paper? Jim? Is your, when you draw your vase, is it going to be bigger than the pink vase people? Yes, of course. Yes. Are you Jim Enzo? Yes. Jim Enzo? Jim Enzo. What do you think? Yes. Yes. Why? Who could tell me why? Bonnie? Because there's less flowers. The flowers are yeah, not so tall. The flowers are not so tall, so they have more room to make their vase and their flowers bigger. So the pink vase people are going to have a smaller vase than the white vase people, even though they're the same shape. Green vase people, so you have a little bit of space here. You've divided it into three, so you're going to go over a little bit of where that, that first dash mark I want you to, green vase people, I want you to put, green vase people, I want you to put your dash line directly above. See where this, right? Green vase people, one, two, three, this is the dash lines, right? Green vase people, there's where your dash line would be. Put the top of your vase a little bit above this first dash line in the middle, directly above white vase people, or uh, pink vase people, your dash line is here. Go over and up a little bit. So, And white vase people, All we're drawing is a little sideways dash to figure out where the top of our vase is going to be. So pink vase, you're going to have the smallest. Try to put it where I've put it. Green vase people will be a little bit above the pink. And white vase will be the biggest, just about close to the middle of the paper. A little bit more. Just sideways, not up and down, sideways. And in the middle, directly above. Okay. Good, good. All right, how are you doing? Good. Jonathan, I think the bottom of your vase is a little bit far away from your border. I think you can put it right here. Okay. That's fine. That's good, Bonnie. Good? Okay, you can make it a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. Okay? Good? You can make them a little bit wider uh, so you can see it more easily. And I want you to take a... Yeah, that's fine. Let's make sure they're directly above each other. Okay, good. Uh, Jim, don't use your ruler. Your ruler will smudge the oil pastel. So, sideways, left and right, a little dash line above here. So, right around there, sideways. Mm -hmm. Like how I'm moving my hand. Okay, that's fine. 
Did you make the top yet? I can't see it from there. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. All right, good. Oh, we weren't supposed to start drawing our base yet. Oh, looks like a nice drawing, though. Excited to see what you what you come up with. Okay, so one problem solved. We know how tall it's going to be now. We know we have two points. This dash line, this dash line, top and bottom. One problem down. We got another problem. Well, we got lots of problems. Art is just all problem solving. So I got my dash line. Okay. What's the problem? We talked about it earlier. We use a special word. Symmetry. Symmetry, that's right. So what I want you to do with your dash lines, you have two dash lines. They're directly above each other. What do we do when we want to determine if something is symmet symmetrical? What do we imagine? Cut it in half. Cut it in half, the line of symmetry. So lightly draw a straight line connecting them lightly do not press hard when you are finished drawing a straight line connecting your top dash and your bottom dash sit well eyes on me let me know that you're ready to move on We have another problem that we need to solve. If we press hard and make one continuous line, that means we are committed to this decision. We are confident that we can draw it perfectly right away, super fast. We're that good. No. Are we that good? No. I'm not that good. So, I think we've talked about it before. Sketchy lines, soft, sketchy lines. Because this is just, we're going to cover everything we do anyway. So, it is okay if we press softly and sketchy if our line is not straight and perfect. We want to draw half of our base. Look at the shape. It kind of makes this S shape this way. And then the green vase does something different. It does. It does that. I want you to compare also how tall is it to how wide is it? So if I make my green base like this, that's a problem. It's too skinny. So we're using the line of symmetry to see how far out does the farthest thing go. So we're using it to compare. It's about half. Okay. And then we'll make the other side. So start with one side, do loose, soft, sketchy lines, then draw the other side. And when you're drawing, when you draw towards the bottom, we know that things aren't flat when they sit on the table, they have a curve to them. So I don't want to see a round top and flat bottom. We talked about that before with the directional mark making. I'm going to come around and check out what you're doing. This. 
and when when you are done drawing your vase go ahead and put your oil pastels up make sure your name's on it draw both sides of your vase very nice Enzo and then put the lid on the box Soft, sketchy lines. Okay. Mm, it's a little bit hard, but it looks good. So you were just that good. You were. I'm confident with my lines. Press hard. It worked out for you that time. Maybe next time it won't work out for you. Good. Make sure it doesn't go past your bottom, uh, uh, Jonathan. So you have to like connect. You have to turn it now, Jonathan. You have to turn the bottom now. Connect, connect the, well, see that's flat, so we need to plan for that curve. There we go. But it is flat. No, you're seeing the sides. Well, okay, this table's in the way because it's, now it's up. Go ahead and put your uh, oil pastels up, pass your papers. No, no, it's fine. All right, go ahead, put your oil pastels up. Collect your papers all in one spot and at your tables when you're done. Chia, can you pass me a paper? Put the lid on your oil pastels. Be gentle with other people's artwork, guys, when we handle it. Don't, don't bend up their papers. Collect your papers all up in one pile. Put the lids on your boxes. Okay. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Jim, I think yours needs to be a little bit wider. We'll talk about that next time. Go ahead, put the lids on. And after cleanup, what do we normally do? I don't see anybody doing it. After cleanup, what do, what do I usually have? No, sit down, sit down. There we go. Five points. Jim, five points. Five points, five points. Yeah, we sit well. And wait to be dismissed. Okay. Go ahead and stand up and push your chairs and silently line up outside.